in or out, in or out. Anytime you do a safety assessment, that's the fundamental question. Is this person going to need a hospitalization, or can this person be safe on an outpatient basis? And that doesn't mean it's the same outpatient setting, right? I mean, it may be that we have to find a higher level of care within outpatient, but before we start going into this, in your head, you have to be thinking in or out. Um, so, the next question is how? How do we gather information? Um, and I was on the drive over, I was trying to think of like a good metaphor for this, um, but we've all had the feeling of sitting there with patients, maybe someone's manic, maybe someone has like 10 different problems at the same time, and we're just overloaded. We're sitting there and we go, where you're writing things down and you get lost in your own interview process and you're not sure what to ask and when to ask it and when to interrupt and when not to. And the metaphor that, it's a bad metaphor, hopefully I'll have a better one for next week, that I, I came up with in the car is like, you know, we, we need to have a sort of category or containers for the information. Even before we start to gather, we need to know what we're going to do with it. And so, Okay, here's a metaphor. If we had water and we wanted to drink the water, and we wanted to, you know, that we pour it into a cup, that's the container. If you don't have a cup and you just pour it and it goes all over the floor, it's much harder to drink the water. I mean, my George Jett, my dog, would be excellent at that. But for the rest of us, you know, we need that cup to be able to make use of the water. We need these categories to be able to make use of the information. Okay? So now let's get into them. All right, so these are the categories that I'll just be teaching today. There are other ways to do safety assessments. Um, but our three cups, our three, our, and then our, our general framework is, what are the static risk factors, what are the dynamic risk factors, and what are the protective factors? What do I mean by static risk factors versus dynamic risk factors? So I may have used the wrong jargon here. Static means unmodifiable risk factors. Dynamic means modifiable risk factors, right? We can separate those out very clearly. So some things you can modify, you can target with medications, you can target with changing settings, containment in the hospital, you can target with therapy and family. Other things you can't target, they cannot be changed, but they're still significant risk factors. Jim. Yes, so we're going to get into that. And then the other, the other category to think about are the protective factors. So in the greedy thing that you'll all have access to, um, it says, you know, uh, static risk factors are X, Y, and Z, dynamic risk factors are X, Y, and Z. These are mitigated by, they're buffered by protective factors, including X, Y, and Z. Protective factors are the things that make us think this is going to be okay. These are good prognostic factors. And we'll get into what those are specifically. All right. Static risk factors. So let's hear them. You said? Gender, age. OK, so gender is a static risk factor. What does that mean? Men are more likely after a certain age to complete a suicide. Beautiful. Beautiful. So um, and, and one of the things that's, so men are more likely to complete a suicide than women. Um, women are more likely to attempt a suicide than men. However, there's a, also a myth that um, men are more likely to be violent than women, and that is true in a non-psychiatric population. But in a psychiatric population, the rates of violence between, uh, among men and women are the same. Um, what else do we have for static risk factors? Yes. So the greatest predictor of Violence, interpersonal violence, or self-directed violence. Hurting others or hurting yourself is your own history. It's have you attempted suicide before? Have you tried to kill someone before? That is a static risk factor and it's super significant. What else? Family of origin. Oh, yeah, so beautiful. So, so another static risk factor would be what was your family life like? Did you get beaten when you were a kid? If you were bullied when you were a kid, you're more likely to own a in the future. If you were... A parent would suicide themselves. Oh, and family history. So that is also really true. And, and that's in our assessment as well, in the new assessment that Amy's working on. 
and putting out that's going to be it's going to be so easy to do. Um, so um, I'm not going to go through all of these because this is really a lecture about how to think about safety assessments. It's not to go over everything. Um, I did want to just go over this though. Axis one through three. So you'll see that the sentence that I've written up about safety is that overall, for every patient we see, I say overall, the rate of the rate of the risk for violence or the risk for suicide is chronically elevated. Why do we say that? Why are we sort of globally telling all, saying that all of our patients have a chronically elevated risk? The reason is that if you are a psychiatric patient, you have a higher risk compared to a non-psychiatric patient of killing yourself. I mean, that, that's just, if you've had that diagnosis, epidemiologically, the risk is higher. So when I have here as a static risk factor, and these are all things that will auto-populate on Brevi, as a static risk factor, axis one through three, just having a psychiatric condition is a risk factor. And then why, why is axis three on there? Because axis three, the medical conditions, tend to exacerbate psychiatric conditions. Um, so they also contribute to risk. Dynamic risk factors. Cool. So let's get into this. What are the dynamic risk factors? I just gave them to you. But, um, yeah, psychosocial stressors. So in Brevi, one of the things that Amy and I are working on are these stems. So, you know, you'll, you'll have a little box where you can put in the specific variables. But these are the categories. And I want to just go through these basics. So ideation, plan, intent. How do we... How do we ask about ideation? What, how, do we, how do we elicit that from our patients? Yeah. But I, and what thoughts? Yes. So I, so I like it that I, I think we have to keep them, keep them all sort of distinct because we want to say, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Are you thinking, have you been thinking you're really depressed right now? Um, often people who are depressed think about killing themselves. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about killing yourself? No. Okay. Um, and then, often though, if we go for it, if we say, you know, it, it is normal, you know, in depression, it's pretty normal to want to escape from your experience of suffering. Have you had those thoughts, like just wanting, you know, wishing that you weren't here? You want to get the specific thoughts. And then, the plan and the intent. So, if you're having the thoughts, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a plan and you need to go through that. And one thing I just want to make clear here around intent. So the most important thing about intent is what the patient thought. And that's, a, that's something that gets confused a lot. So if a patient came to you and said, I took five Tylenol, five pills of Tylenol, and you said, it doesn't seem like a big thing, no worries, you would be missing something. You need to ask, did you think it would kill you or not? And if the patient is telling you, yeah, I, I really thought five pills of Tylenol would kill you, that's in some ways a higher magnitude or a greater magnitude of intent than if someone took like a whole bottle and said, oh, you know, and again, we're just, we're accepting that these are truthful things coming from our patients here. Um, they may or may not be, but if the person said, um, you know, I took the whole bottle, I just, I just thought it would like make me throw up. Right? So we need to be clear about what the patient thinks. And one thing that is really cool is that there have been a lot of um, standardized measures that have been used to try to predict violence and suicide, and they all bomb. And one thing that came out, I'll send you the study that came out in 2013, was a study where you just collaborate with your patient and say, on a scale of zero to five, how likely are you, how likely do you think you are to hurt someone in the next few months or to kill yourself in the next few months? And that was actually shown in this study to have better predictive value than the scales that we're using. Okay, so symptoms and stressors, I think you understand that. Any symptom that a person is having that's an active psychotic symptom, that's something that you're going to put in there as a dynamic risk factor, something that we need to target. I want to get into something fun. Um, I'm going to skip through the protective factors because we just have such limited time and I'm going to give this talk again. Um, but. This is, supposed to be, this is supposed to be fun. So I'm going to play you a, a really cool clip of a patient interview. And I want everyone to be writing down what are the dynamic risk factors, what are the static risk factors, and what are the protective factors.
Okay, so we're just going to very quickly go through this and I'm going to show you what you're going to have on Grevy. I didn't get Grevy login for this computer, unfortunately, but this is what you will see on Grevy. So um, um, when you put in, and we, you know, we may modify this, nothing's permanent, but when you type in dot safety, it will auto-populate, and it'll have risk factors, protective factors, and assessment. I put two assessments here that you can choose from. You can just delete one of them. But essentially, this just says, assessment one is, we can, we can manage this person on an outpatient basis. Assessment two is, we have to send the patient in. So the next lecture, and this will be a, a brown bag lunch lecture also, is how to do a safety plan. Because this decision, whether you hospitalize or whether you send outpatient, is contingent on you being able to develop a safety plan that targets dynamic risk factors, modifiable risk factors. We can't do anything about the static risk factors, but we have to have in our plan a way to contain those dynamic risk factors. So you'll see risk factors, suicide and violence risk are increased overall given multiple dynamic factors. And we want you to put in here what are the dynamic factors. So for George, what are the dynamic risk factors? I identified 12. <laughs> nice. All right. Why don't you give us give us your your favorite two? Uh, he had the means. He had a gun, yeah. and he felt singled out. Great. Yeah. What What do other people think? Other dynamic risk factors for George? His intention. His intention. Yeah. Five percent chance of you know uh, still kill kill the dude. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. So what, that's not dynamic. The history of violence is static. But command hallucination. So positive psychotic symptoms are the predictor of violence and schizophrenics. People who have predominant negative symptoms of schizophrenia, those people are much less likely to, to, do, to do things because they're in, in some ways limited by the negative symptoms, by the A motivation and apathy and uh, the energic features. But these positive psychotic symptoms are scary to us. Okay, what else? Other? Yeah, I think that's great. That's a great pickup, yeah. So th there was this recent separation, um, and so we know that there are interpersonal stressors. <clears throat> the guy has no furniture left. That's a bummer. <laughs> that's that's going to be stressful. Um, so is this separation dynamic or is it static? The separation, I think, given the given how close it is in time to what's happened here, would be a dynamic risk factor. Um, let's jump into static, just because I know we have limited time. So, um, what are the static risk factors that we have for this guy? Race. Race. Okay. I actually don't know if, if, if race in a psychiatric population is still a, a predictor. I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's, I, we could look it up. I don't know, yeah. And he described himself as the only African-American man, and that he felt singled out well, so I, as an African-American That would be a dynamic risk factor, right? That the isolation at work, the alienation at work, but the static risk factors are things that we cannot modify. They've already existed, right? So we've heard about a history of violence. The dude knows how to hurt people. A legal history. A history of alcoholism. But we were told in the beginning he has a history of alcoholism. He said he wasn't drinking now, but he does have a history of alcoholism. What's that? Bar fights? Sure. Um, okay, so those are some, those are some good ones. Um, he probably has some access one through three diagnoses there that we would put in there. Um, and then protective factors. Do we get, did we get any protective factors? Cool. Yeah, good. So he's connected to family. 
he also had a moral imperative, right? When he came in, he presented voluntarily because he knew that he was going to do something wrong. So there are some, some protective factors there. Would now, you also say the absence of drug use is a protective factor? No, I don't know, if he, I don't know if he really, based, based on the interview, I'm still not convinced that he's not drinking. I would want to get collateral history on whether he was actively drinking or not, even though he denied it. Uh, yeah. That is great, right? So they've been warned. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, another thing to think about just from the dynamic perspective is before we try to make a decision together about what should happen to this dude, his thinking is way off, right? I mean, the guy is like, it's no big deal. I can go back to work with a 5% chance of killing my boss as long as I do my job. So there's, his thinking is not back to, back to normal right now. Um, we don't know what his baseline is, but it seemed to be better than that because he was functioning for a long time at that job. So the assessment, are we sending him out today based on this interview? Manzanita. <laughs> How do the interim people feel about that? <laughs>